Brain cancer. Unlike the other cells of your body, most brain cells, specifically the neurons, cannot do one thing, replicate. You see, because the brain is located in an enclosed space, your skull, it means that it always has to be in a state of balance because, as you can imagine, the brain is an extremely delicate organ, with the slightest change in its environment able to cause symptoms almost instantly. Now, because of this, cancers of the brain are relatively rare, only accounting for about 1.4% of cases of cancer in the US per the CDC. With brain cancer, even the earliest grade cancers if they occur just at the wrong spot, you'd essentially be handed a death sentence because cancers multiply and take space. They like to take up as much energy as possible from your healthier tissue, and they do this by rewiring the blood vessels in your body to give itself all the energy it wants. Now, if this were to happen in parts of the brain like your brain stem, which controls all of your unconscious actions like breathing, heart rate, and swallowing, nine times out of 10, no surgeon in their right mind would try and risk the operation. The specific symptoms of brain cancer depend on the location and size of the tumor. Common symptoms include persistent headaches, seizures, vision problems, personality changes, and impaired movement or speech. But in some cases, cancer might grow in areas of the brain from movement control or pain pain sensation, etc., meaning you could be paralyzed or in unbearable pain all the time. The symptoms are essentially all dependent on where the cancer decides to set up camp. Breast cancer. Breast cancer is a type of cancer that originates in the breast tissue. It typically starts when cells in the breast begin to grow and divide abnormally, forming a lump or mass. Breast cancer is one of the most common types of cancer among women worldwide. In the United States alone, it is estimated that about one in eight women will develop breast cancer during their lifetime. And despite what you might believe, breast cancer can also occur in men, although it is much less common. Breast cancer, if left untreated, can spread, metastasize, to other parts of the body through the lymphatic system or bloodstream. The cancer cells can travel and form new tumors in other organs, such as the lungs, liver, bones, or brain. With the lungs being the closest organ to create new masses, think of cancer as a selfish camper. It will always try and set up a tent wherever it goes, no matter what you tell it, and it almost always starts stealing your food to feed its friends. In the early stages, there may be no noticeable symptoms, which is why regular breast self-exams, where you regularly try and feel your breast for any irregularities and mammograms are crucial for early detection. As cancer progresses, common symptoms may include a lump or thickening in the breast, changes in breast size or shape, nipple discharge, and skin irritation or dimpling. The good news is that the treatment options for breast cancer may include surgery, lumpectomy or mastectomy, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, or a combination of all three, and the cancer usually responds pretty well. Lung cancer. Probably among the most common and deadly types of cancer out there. In the United States alone, it is estimated that lung cancer accounts for about 13% of all new cancer cases and is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths. Yet, it's estimated that it's among the most preventable cancers as the most significant cause of this, as you can probably guess, is smoking. With it accounting for about 80 to 90% of cases, and we mean any form of inhalation of smoke into the lungs, though some stand a greater risk than others. But because of this cause, a majority of lung cancer patients are unfortunately seen as it being their fault. With lung cancer, the two spongy organs responsible for breathing begin to have cells that line the lungs mutate and grow uncontrollably, forming multiple tumors. The effects of lung cancer on the body can vary depending on a lot of variables from the cancer itself. Still, common symptoms would be a persistent cough, which is your body's reflex of trying and clear your chest of the mass, but all in vain, shortness of breath as the masses take up more space, chest pain, and coughing up blood as the cancers eat you from the inside out. Lung cancer can lead to painful complications such as fluid buildups in the lung, which will cause a struggle to breathe, respiratory failure as the fluid drowns you, and bone pain if it spreads to the bones. The two main types of lung cancers are non-small cell lung cancer, NSCLC, and small cell lung cancer, SCLC. 
With small cell lung cancer being almost impossible to remove as the tumors are difficult to operate on, the prognosis is terrible. Treatment options may include surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, or a combination of these approaches depending on the type and stage of the cancer as well as the patient's overall health. Prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is a type of cancer that begins in the prostate gland, a small walnut-shaped gland found only in biological men. The prostate is part of the male reproductive system and is responsible for producing seminal fluid, which is essential for your sperm to survive the long journey to the ovum to get fertilized. Probably the male equivalent of breast cancer, prostate cancer is one of the most common types of cancer among men, particularly in older age groups. In the United States, it is estimated that about one in eight men will be diagnosed with prostate prostate cancer during their lifetime. In its early stages, prostate cancer often has no symptoms. As the cancer grows, it may cause urinary problems as the cancer slowly grows towards your bladder. And because the male bladder is extremely sensitive to any form of pressure, you'd have issues like having the feeling of wanting to urinate more, difficulty starting or stopping the urine flow, a weak or interrupted urine stream, especially at night. Other symptoms can include blood in the urine or semen as the cancer is now going through your urethral walls and erectile dysfunction because all the nerves going to the penis surround the prostate. Standard treatment approaches include active surveillance, closely monitoring low-risk cases, surgery, prostatectomy, or therapies usually used in other cancer cases. Leukemia Leukemia is the most common childhood cancer, accounting for around 28% of all cancers diagnosed in children under the age of 15 in the United States. Leukemia essentially affects the body's blood-forming tissues, such as the bone marrow and the lymphatic system. It begins when specific blood cells acquire mutations in their DNA, causing them to grow and divide uncontrollably. There are two main types of this cancer. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL, which is the most common form of childhood leukemia, making up about 75% of childhood leukemia cases. It typically affects children between the ages of 2 and 8 years old, where the body makes a huge amount of immature types of white blood cells called lymphoblasts at a rate the body cannot handle. Acute myeloid leukemia, AML. This accounts for about 20% of childhood leukemia cases, which creates immature myeloid cells, another type of white blood cell. In children with leukemia, the abnormal cells accumulate in the bone marrow, crowding out average blood cell production. This can lead to symptoms such as fatigue, easy bruising or bleeding, frequent infections, fever, and bone or joint pain, which are usually quite severe to the point where, even at such a young age, they need painkillers like morphine just to dull the pain by a little. Treatment for childhood leukemia typically involves extremely intensive chemotherapy to the point where a majority of them all lose their hair. Sometimes it can be combined with radiation therapy or stem cell transplantation. The goal is to induce remission by destroying the leukemia cells and allowing average blood cell production to resume. Early diagnosis and treatment are really important for improving outcomes in children with leukemia. With modern treatments and supportive care, the overall five-year survival rate for childhood acute lymphoblastic leukemia is now around 90%, and for childhood acute myeloid leukemia is around 65%. Skin cancer. Skin cancer is the most common type of cancer in the United States, with almost one in five Americans developing some form of skin cancer by the age of 70. The outer layer of your skin, the epidermis, is in a constant state of regeneration, undergoing a cycle of renewal every 27 to 30 days. New skin cells are produced in the deeper layers and are gradually pushed upwards, maturing until they die and are shed as flaky skin. Excessive exposure to sun ultraviolet UV rays radiation is a known carcinogen capable of penetrating the skin and damaging the DNA within skin cells. This can disrupt normal cell growth and division, sometimes leading to mutations that cause uncontrolled cell growth and potentially skin cancer. Melanoma, a type of skin cancer that develops from melanocytes, the pigment-producing cells, is considered the most serious due to its ability to spread to other parts of the body if not detected and treated early. Initially, melanoma may manage manifest as an irregular mole or skin lesion, exhibiting color, size, shape, or border changes. 
As it progresses, it may cause symptoms like bleeding, itching, or ulceration of the affected area. Symptoms can vary if it spreads to other organs, such as coughing up blood if it reaches the lungs, or seizures if it affects the brain. Despite accounting for only about 1% of skin cancer cases, melanoma is responsible for the majority of skin cancer-related deaths. Treatment typically involves the surgical removal of the cancerous growth and may include radiation therapy, chemotherapy, or other treatments depending on the type and stage of the cancer. With many people seeming to think that sunscreen doesn't work, for literally less than $10, you can have the chances of getting skin cancer. Pancreatic cancer the pancreas is an important organ that plays a vital role in digestion and blood sugar regulation. It produces enzymes that help break down food, especially fats and proteins, and hormones like insulin and glucagon that regulate blood sugar levels. When cancer develops in the pancreas, usually either to lifestyle choices, i.e. excessive alcohol or radiation, it can significantly disrupt the normal functions of this organ. The one thing that almost all cases have is the pain. As the cancer is too tumor grows with the pancreas, it can put intense pressure on surrounding nerves and organs, causing excruciating abdominal and back pain. As the pancreatic cancer continues, it causes the release of digestive enzymes from the pancreas, which can lead to inflammation and autodigestion of the organ itself. The organ is essentially digesting itself, and as you can imagine, this process is incredibly painful. The pain from pancreatic cancer is often described as dull, constant, and radiating to the back. It tends to worsen over time as the tumor grows. Even with pain medication, many patients experience breakthrough pain that can be severe and debilitating. Most of the symptoms would also be unexplained weight loss as the tumor is sucking up all the nutrients, jaundice, yellowing of the skin and whites of the eyes because of the blockages of the growth in the ducts of the stomach, and constant nausea and vomiting. As your blood is filled with toxic substances from the destroyed pancreas, your body tries to get rid of them. Treatment options for pancreatic cancer may include surgery to remove the tumor if if possible, or targeted therapy. However, pancreatic cancer is often diagnosed at an advanced stage when surgical removal is not feasible. Thyroid cancer. It is probably one of the less known organs in your body, but this butterfly-shaped gland located at the base of the neck is basically responsible for your mood, metabolism, and growth. Thyroid cancer is relatively uncommon compared to some other cancers, but its incidence has been increasing in recent years. It accounts for about 3% of all new cancer cases in the United States. It is more common in women than men and typically occurs in people between the ages of 25 and 65. Thyroid cancer can easily spread metastasize because of the nearby lymph nodes in the neck, meaning it has an almost infinite highway to continue spreading as the lymphatic system goes everywhere in the body. However, many types of thyroid cancer tend to grow slowly and may not spread for several years. As the tumor grows, it may form a lump or nodule in the neck that can be felt or seen. Because the lump is growing, you have issues like difficulty swallowing as the cancer takes up more space in the neck, hoarseness or a change and voice because the cancer interferes with the nerves going to the voice box, and persistent cough or breathing difficulties. While thyroid cancer can be serious, many types are highly treatable, especially when detected early. The overall five-year survival rate for thyroid cancer is around 98% when localized at diagnosis. Ovarian cancer. Because most of its symptoms tend to be very similar to other conditions, it's often called silent killer. The most common type, accounting for about 90% of cases, is epithelial ovarian cancer, starting in the cells covering the outer surface of the ovary. The risk factors are usually due to increasing age, with most cases occurring after menopause, where the female no longer produces ovum every month during ovulation. Having a first-degree relative who has had ovarian cancer almost doubles the risk. Inherited Inherited genetic mutations in genes like BRCA1 and BRCA2 can significantly increase ovarian and breast cancer risk, with celebrities like Angelina Jolie having to resort to removing their entire uterus and ovaries to prevent this risk. Ovarian cancer symptoms can be very vague, and most women will think of it as the usual monthly issues, including abdominal bloating, pelvic pain, difficulty eating, and feeling full quickly. The treatment depends on the cancer 
cancer stage and the patient's overall health. Surgery may involve removing the ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, and sometimes surrounding tissues and lymph nodes, while chemotherapy aims to try and eliminate any remaining cancer cells after surgery and reduced recurrent risk. Thank you.